of all the aspects of the saxophone that we could talk about here at sax.co.uk, none is more important than the reed. The reed is what makes the sound, and without it, everything else is useless. The mouthpiece, useless. The saxophone, useless. The case, not useless. You put your saxophone in there, still useful. But the reed is something that we have to be considerate of and something that we should treat very seriously. But that does not mean we have to get lost in jargon and get confused and cry a little about it. Because we at sax.co.uk, we know our reeds. So this is the reed explained. Let's start with the reed strength. The reed strength is normally indicated by a number either on the reed itself or on the box, and that will range from 1.5 all the way up to 5. Now, a lot of people confuse that reed strength with thickness. It's nothing to do with thickness at all. In fact, a 1.5 strength reed is exactly the same thickness as a 5 strength reed. It's all about resistance, density. So, the higher that number, the more dense the reed is and the more resistant it will be to play, the more difficult it will be to play. When first starting the saxophone, I like to think of reed strength like going to the gym. When you go to the gym for the first time, you don't go and pick up the heaviest weights or you don't go onto the treadmill and run at 400 miles an hour and try and be the quickest and the strongest in there. You have to start off slowly and it's the same with reed strength. So, when you first start, play a 1.5 and as you get better, you can increase that strength. That doesn't mean you have to always increase that strength. It's not like the overall aim of playing the saxophone is to play strength 5 reeds, playing cricket bats essentially. Once you get to a two and a half or a three, most players sort of settle down at that point. But it's all about finding the tone that suits you. Maybe a firmer reed works for you, maybe a softer reed works. There's no right or wrong answer. It's whatever suits you the best. To hear the tonal differences of a softer and harder reed, the best thing to do is grab a saxophone and Where's the tone key? I think he's out the back. Now we venture into very, very murky waters and into the great filed versus unfiled debate. This one's a bit tricky because it depends on who you ask, it depends on oh, should you get a filed or should you get an unfiled. Basically, a filed reed, if you look at the back of the reed, you're going to see the lighter part of the reed, which is called the vamp and it's going to have a clear horizontal line against the darker part of the reed called the stock. That cut means it's filed. If you get an unfiled reed, it's going to have a very obvious U shape. It's almost as if the darker part of the reed has just naturally progressed into the vamp. It doesn't have that clear cut. What difference does that make to your overall tone? Well, in theory, when you have a filed reed, it should be quicker to respond and it should be a slightly bit buzzier because you are cutting away some of the thicker part of that stock. That way, when you play it for the first time, it should resonate a little bit more. The unfiled reeds, then in theory, should have more core to the sound because you've got more of that thickness in the overall stock of the reed. In practice, these differences are very, very minute, if at all recognisable. It's gonna, you're going to notice it more in feel than you are going to be in sound. This is why companies like Van Doren and Daddario offer both filed and unfiled variations of the same cut of reed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Now, unlike the great FILED versus UNFILED debate, the cut of the reed is going to have a drastic effect on how that reed performs. It's going to affect three different things. The tip, which is right at the top of the reed. The heart, which is right in the centre of the vamp, which is that lighter coloured part of the reed we were talking about earlier. And the spine, which is the grain that runs directly through the middle of the reed. The spine and the heart, they go hand in hand and they will be cut either thickly or thinly. So when the heart is cut thickly, it gives you a rich center to the core, but a bit less spread in the harmonics of the overall sound. If the heart is cut thinly, you've got a bit less of that central core sound, but a lot more spread. This then rolls into the tip. So if the tip is cut thickly, it's gonna give you sharper articulation, but it's gonna be more difficult to bed in. It's gonna be more difficult to get playing for the first time. A thinner cut tip is gonna be less sharp on the articulation, but you will be able to blow it more quickly. It's gonna be a bit more responsive straight away. So when it comes to which type of cut is right for you, there are some generic answers. So classical players typically go for thicker cut reeds uh, with thicker tips. Things like the Van Doren V21s and the Daddario Reserves. That is because they really care about the central core to the tone. Classical players have to be so articulate, so on the point and they want a reed that's gonna give them that really rich centered sound and it's gonna be very, very articulate for all those very complicated passages. Jazz players will go for something typically with a slightly thinner heart and a thinner tip. So stuff like the Daddario Select Jazz or the Van Doren ZZs. That's because jazz players want more of that spread tone. They want a center to their core, of course, but they don't mind so much if you get a bit of bleed in that harmonics because it adds color to your overall tone. However, this is not a hard and fast rule. There are many aspects of classical reeds, that sharp articulation, that real rich core to the tone, that work perfectly in genres like funk, because funk players really care about that sharp, that sharp articulation and that real core to their tone. At the same time, jazz players might want that too. They might want something that's gonna give them that really rich center. Classical players might want something that's a bit more spread if they're doing some more contemporary work. So don't get put off with a reed that is classical or a reed that is jazz. Your best bet is to experiment and find something that's gonna give you the tonal response that you're looking for. <laughs> A question we get here a lot at sax.co.uk is how long should my reed last? And that is a very difficult question to answer because reeds are a natural product. They're made of cane. So like any natural product, they are uh, susceptible to the same fallings and same failings as, well, anything. There are things you can do to keep your reed alive for longer. Disassembling your mouthpiece every time you finish playing will certainly help both on a hygiene level, as well as to stop the reed warping, which is when it gets wavy lines on the top. Similar to that, getting a humidity control case will certainly help with uh, warping as you're gonna keep the moisture of that reed consistent. Now, some players like to soak their reeds and keep them always wet. Uh, they can do that in water, some players even if you need vodka. I mean, we're all saxophone players, it's inevitable, but, uh, you've got to be careful of reed saturation, getting too much moisture in the reed. The thing is, no matter what you do, that reed will die. Simple as that. <laughs> How long a reed should last? If you're lucky, you can get three weeks to a month out of a very nice reed. If you take care of it, some players will get longer than that. Some players will get less time than that. 
At the end of the day, it's impossible to say, but if you clean your read, maintain your read, it should last a little bit longer. One of the biggest gripes that players have with reads is consistency. Because reads are made of cane, a natural product, they sometimes will buy a box of these 10 reads, and occasionally will only find two or three in a box that actually suit what they want and waste the other eight, which is just not good in many, many circles, including environmentally and fiscally and all that kind of stuff. That's why for those players that really care about consistency, it might be worth looking at synthetic reads. Synthetic reeds have existed in one way or another for a couple of decades, but it's only in the last five or six years that we have seen them rocket in popularity. That's thanks to the advances in technology in both printing the reeds and cutting the reeds. Now you can get uh, synthetic reeds that are cut very similar to cane reeds. Synthetic reeds have some very obvious advantages over their cane counterparts, namely in longevity. Whereas, as I said before, a cane reed is inconsistent and we can't guarantee how long it will last, you will find most synthetic reeds will last you up to three months compared to the three weeks a cane reed will typically last. They're a lot easier to clean. You can just wipe them down because, again, they're plastic. They're not going to warp because, again, they're plastic. And they're going to be less likely to chip. A cane reed is very, very easy to chip. They're very, very fragile. Synthetic reeds are much less fragile. One of the main downsides to synthetic reeds is the cost. The price of one reed is typically the same as a whole box of cane reeds. So that is quite an expensive outlay, especially if you're not too sure what strength you need. Now, you can use some guides on our website that are going to give you a clear idea of what strengths equal what. We also do have testers here at sax.co.uk London. Again, synthetic reeds, very easy to clean. So you can come in and try them if you're unsure. The one criticism a lot of players draw against synthetic reeds will be in tonal response. Some players think that it sounds a bit too buzzy. It sounds a bit too synthetic compared to the sort of woody natural sound you do get from cane. As I said, the technology is developing and has developed really, really quickly. So now there are cuts of synthetic reed that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in cutting to a cane reed. You're getting all of that sort of years and years of expertise, but in a much more precise piece of kit. That doesn't mean there's still not going to be any differences, but those differences are becoming smaller and smaller. So it's well worth trying a synthetic read and see if it gives you the tonal response you're looking for. So that is the read explained. Of course, there is much more information if you want to dig in and really dive into the uh, minutia of reads, but it's complicated. So that's going to give you the rundown of what you're looking for. So good news for you is that if you are watching this and inspired to try new reads with all the major brands, Bandora and Daddario, we sell them as individual reads. So you can buy one strength of each or buy one of different cuts of each or buy, and buy one and uh, cane read one synthetic read and you can try those out and those are available on our website and in store of course you are more than welcome to try synthetic reads in store cane reads you do have to buy because you can't clean them they're cane and it would be weird if we gave them out to other people do come into store and see us if you have any questions do let us know in the comments below or you can give us a ring or email the store following the link below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.